Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope that you're doing really well in the new moment of now. I hope that whenever and wherever you are on the planet, that you are filled with the joy and the brightness and the hope that is the newness of the new year. We're closing in on the end of the first week, and that's okay. It's okay if you haven't started your resolutions or you haven't even written one or came up with an idea yet. That's okay. Tonight, I've got you covered, babe. We are going to go over 10 ways to create and keep realistic resolutions in the year 2020. It's all okay. I want you to get into the joy and the feel of the newness of the energy of this year. Like allow it to impermeate your chakras and wash over your aura and just cleanse you from the inside out. Allow the newness of the energy to wash over your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, and your spirit body. I want you to imagine you're standing under a waterfall and the water is softly falling. And as it does, it it covers your whole body and it washes away all of the remnants of last decade, all of the remnants of last year. And it leaves you with the sparkling diamond energy of the newness. Everything is new, clean slate, new life, buddy. You got it. You got this. You got this. The universe has got your back. And it's with the sense of renewed newness. (laughs) Everything is new in this moment. And in every moment, in fact, every moment is a new moment. So always be aware of the perpetual new energy always coming your way. Now, speaking of new energy, there's something I ought to tell you guys. (laughs) Well, two days ago, we were hit with a um, solar plasma wave. Solar winds were sent our way when the the sun started having a little bit more activity. And that's cool. I think something hit us a couple hours ago, right before I started to record. Um, I just got this cosmic nap energy wave come over me for about 20, 30 minutes. And then it went away and I'm like, Oh, there's a little bit of an energy there. (laughs) And I asked, there was no one in my room, no one extra anyway, (laughs) that wasn't normally there. And I started looking into it from spaceweather.com as well as, um, uh, why so serious 24 D YouTube channel and suspicious observers. And so What I have gleaned and gathered for what we have going this week for, as far as the cosmic weather, the space weather, (laughs) um, you know that our our magnetosphere has been cracked and that's been a problem because also the uh, solar minimum has just been, I mean, literally 77% of the year of 2019, the sun did jack. Crap. <laughs> it did nothing. The sun was doing nothing. It's like, what? What? The sun went on vacation. He's hibernating like a bear. We don't have a sun in the sky. We have a bear that's hibernating. And so we, solar cycle, like 24, the solar minimum has been crazy. Well, I actually, I think that each cycle is like the minimum and then the maximum or the maximum and then the minimum. But the minimum has been extremely minimum. It's been a maximus minimum, if you will. <laughs> but uh, Sarah O'Brien, she said something that I cannot confirm, uh, but I also can't deny it. She said that on the 11th, which is this coming Friday, we will be bombarded with a CME, a coronal mass ejection that came off the sun. And that it's expected to hit on the 11th of January. But I can't find that anywhere on any of the scientific pages. So take that with a grain of salt until I can find it. But if you feel an energy, don't like go over to 
the Shimon residents go, ooh, it's 20 today. I knew I felt weird. No, if you, <laughs> if we get bombarded by a bunch of energy on Friday, it, it ain't no Schumann resonance. It's no Schumann. <laughs> it's probably going to be a straight up coronal mass ejection from the sun. We do have one little teeny tiny sunspot to the bottom of the sun and in the lower region of the sun. And it is in a state of decay. It is starting to decay, but it has not yet decayed. So it does still have activity. And I think that's where the uh, CME came from. It has to have. Because the other sunspot that is starting... And it's not decaying, and that's in the center regions, but it's not quite tipped around towards the Earth yet. Not quite just yet. But I'm going to read to you what it says here on spaceweather.com, my new favorite website. Uh, they say um, the decaying sunspot AR2755 has a reversed magnetic pol polarity that identifies it as a member of new solar cycle 25. So that makes me feel comfortable, even though we're going to now have solar flares and more solar winds and chrono mass ejections. It's, I would rather have that than nothing from the sun because when the sun does nothing, when it hibernates like a bear, what happens is we are now open to a lot more cosmic radiation. And even one week ago, According to this website, we had, um, what do they call it? They said it was uh, the cosmic rays were at the maximum level. It, they were very, very high. Now, when you have a solar minimum underway, the sun's magnetic field is weakened and it allows cosmic, extra cosmic rays into the solar system, not just our planet, but all of them. Neutron counts from the University of Ulu's Sodan Kila Geophysical Observatory show that cosmic rays reaching Earth in 2019 are near a space age peak. I don't know what that means, but it sounds serious as hell. <laughs> Today we were at high. for uh, One week ago we were at a very high level. But we did have the solar winds coming, so the sun's starting to wake up again, and now we're getting a little bit of the sunspots. There was a massive amount of auroras in the northern hemisphere of our planet, and they were gorgeous, and they were green, and they had little bits of purple around the edges. And one of the pictures from yesterday on Spacewalk.com I kid you not, it looks like a green dragon, the outline of green dragon, this huge, glorious wings outstretched, and he has his back to us, and he turns, and he gives us a little smirk. And, of course, they're not going to notice that. The scientists don't notice things like that, but I do. I, I'm very good at finding the faces and the energies in the fairy kingdom <laughs> and in the spirit world. I, I got used to looking for it, and then I see it, and I'm looking at these pictures going, oh, my God. It's so gorgeous. I mean, the shapes that the, the aurora, aurora has been taking. Incredible. They said there's a great deal of, a great amount of energy underneath their feet. They said it seemed to be like some kind of a shock wave. And the instruments detected a sudden strong variation in the ground currents and the local magnetic field. And it was really quite a surprise, they said. And also it was in Norway and in Finland they, they discovered this. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, currently, the solar wind is at a speed of 388.8 kilometers per second. The density is 2.9 protons per centimeter cubed. What the hell does that mean? If anyone can explain it to me, I'd like to know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've got... A solar flare, our, our CME, is on its way to us. It'll be here on the 11th. What else will be here on the 11th is the penumbral lunar eclipse. Now, if you're in Asia, you're going to notice it. It's going to be like an odd pale shadow that darkens the moon's southern hemisphere. It's penumbral. It's like a little bit lower than the lower half of the moon. But it's only going to be visible from Asia, so it's really only going to affect Asia. According to Lada du. Chenka, oh my god, I'm probably not saying her name right. On YouTube, she was saying that I didn't see her whole episode, 
But she said that it's going to affect India and Asia. And there's going to be like a tight fisted dictator type of situation come up. There's going to be some really strong fisted leaders that um, they're going to like be in opposition to the people. So look in India for some issues. So if you're in India, you know what? Start praying right now. And everyone who doesn't even live in India, start praying right now. Give them power back to the people. Give that energy of, of love and power. You know, it's pretty, pretty intense, man. Um, some of the stuff. So as far as what's going on with this, though, according to CafeAstrology.com, uh, they say that this full moon is about balancing our commitment to career and family. Now, something's been building inside of us. Now is the time when the energy of the cosmos fairly demands that we let it out. So over the next coming weeks or months, we will discover what this means for us. For now, we might be able to sit on our feelings for a little bit, but it's going to be such a pressure built up that we need to express our feelings. The full moon will illuminate any conflicts. And it says that some sort of crisis, which could be a crisis of consciousness, we could have a dark night of the soul again. We, we might have, uh, you know, some spiritual pressure or some awareness of a lack in our lives will provide us with a golden opportunity to explore our emotional needs within the context of the house polarity where the eclipse occurs in our natal chart. So it depends on how it affects us directly. But it says that the discovery could be emotionally charged and dramatic, especially, I think, this is me now, this is my idea, that if we haven't really dealt with our shadow side, and I was just talking about that yesterday. If you didn't hear yesterday's episode in the, in the intro, you might want to go back and work on yourself a little bit. And it's okay, you know, it's not as painful as it sounds. It's more painful if you don't do it. And in fact, on the uh, Why So Serious 24D, she was saying, hey, you know what? Right now, the energy that's coming in, there's a green energy. And you know what? Yeah, I just on spaceweather.com, there was a green energy. I saw it, like, you know, the aurora, there's like this green energy in the atmosphere. I didn't see it with my cosmic vision. I didn't look outside for any colors today. I forgot. But that green energy is going to repair anything uh, that we have wrong with our heart chakra. And our heart chakra is going to be affected, especially if we haven't let go of heart related things, things that have hurt us. So you might feel pressure in your heart. You might feel like a pain in your chest or like palpitations. If you have not dealt with your emotional stuff that affected you on a love level or a heart level. So just don't be afraid. Just do it. You know, it's, it's one of those things that we've got to deal with. We all have to deal with it. So don't feel like you're the only one in the whole wide world and no one else has to deal with their stuff. Because we all, in the end, have got to deal with it. <laughs> you know, so don't worry. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. I, I swear everything will be all right. Now, heartmouthinstitute.org, their site is down again. It's like been three days in a row. And for disclosure news, power 15. It's not, not terrible, you know, not terribly... Uh, a whole lot going on there. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know what's going on exactly why it's so low in one place and not even available in the others, but it's not the only thing that's affecting us. It's really not. It's the only, you know, the things that have been affecting us, um, it, you know, have been the cosmic radiation, this now the solar winds and the coronal mass ejection and upcoming a lunar eclipse and the, um, have something else. What was I going to say? Yeah, and the Schumann resonance it, resonance does affect us, but not. And I think that more we're actually affecting it. I feel like we get a collective sort of a oh something's coming energy, and then boom, and then it, and then that affects the Schumann resonance. But the electricity and the magnet uh, magnetic parts of the Earth they're not totally functioning right magnetosphere isn't totally functioning. So we're kind of, we're kind of left, um, guessing with what, what's going on, but it's been a lot of earthquakes that have been affected by the cosmic radiation. 
And because magnetosphere is wide open, the fireballs that normally would be like little meteorites that will just come on in, get burned up in the atmosphere, but a boom, but a bang, it's not even going to touch the ground. And if it does, it's just a tiny little rock, ain't no thing. Um, we've had 23 massive fireballs explode in our upper atmosphere or, or, or like and or come down, touch Earth. Because there's no magnetosphere and there's no sun. There hasn't been any sun, you know, <laughs> any sun projection. Our big brother's asleep. Let's wake him up. Poke the bear. <laughs> Get him up. Come on, buddy. Wake up. But thank God Solar Cycle 25 has started. And I don't know. I do, I do feel better about that. I really do. So, um, where are we at with, uh, lesson 206 for a course in miracles. The foundation for inner peace is found by going to ACIM.org, which stands for a course in miracles, ACIM. And this is the lesson. It's, uh, you know, a review again. Um, I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. And the only um, review that we're going over today is from Lesson 186. And this is what it is. Salvation of the world depends on me. Salvation of the world depends on me. And then, then the explanation of the thought I am entrusted with the gifts of God because I am his son and I would give his gifts where he intended them to be. I am not a body. I am free for I am still as God created me. And again, salvation of the world depends on me. That's an awesome responsibility. So humbling, isn't it? To think that, seriously, you're you're responsible for the world being saved. And the only way you can do that, honey, is to go inside. Work with your shadow stuff. Get rid of everything so that all you feel is the peace of God. And when you allow the peace to permeate you, that's when you feel the love. And when you feel the love, then you can express it outwardly. And you can allow it to flow through you. And everyone in the whole wide world can be saved through that action. If we all made a commitment to that as light workers, this is what's going to happen. We're going to fill the world with peace and joy, love and happiness. And then everything else will be added unto us, according to the word of Brother Yeshua. Yeah, so that's what it is. That's like how it is. That's what's going on. <laughs> that's what's going on. <laughs> anyway, um, it's, I'm trying to think if there's any other announcements. Oh, yes, by the way. We still do have that <laughs> supernova. That's coming on the 13th. That's in six days. It will be here in six days. Now, the last time the supernova energy came, the shockwave, it only hit the bottom part of the Earth, and that's why we're now having all those problems with electricity in New Zealand. 6,000 lightning strikes around the volcanic island before the volcano erupted, and then that's why we have all the dryness in Australia and all of a sudden all these fires. The dry lightning, again, with the lightning, it's like it's like... Stripping away the magnetosphere, stripping away more magnetism and allowing only the electricity, only allowing the male to be out of control, right? The male energy, which is uh, the electricity and magnetosphere, the magnet energy is female. The divine feminine energy is magnetic. So, you know, just... Brace yourself for that one, too. (laughs) I don't know what else to say. I mean, yeah, there might have been a little bit of a wave of something today, but um, on the 9th, we will be hit with solar winds. On the 11th, we will be hit with the coronal mass ejection from the sun. And on the 13th, we will be hit with a supernova shockwave. So it's like every other day we're getting something over here. (laughs) Take it into your body and just allow it to be. 
drink water, get some sleep, eat your vegetables and your fruit. If you have to eat meat, if you do eat meat like I do, I, I still eat meat. So you know what? Just, just do what you need to do for you, right? Make sure you're doing healthy habits for yourself. It's going to make you feel good. You know, sometimes a Snickers bar makes you feel good, but make sure you follow it up with, you know, maybe a nice Caesar salad, chicken Caesar salad. If you still eat meat, I love that. That's so good. Fresh Parmesan cheese. Oh, so good. <laughs> I'm going to have to get off here and eat in a minute, but I, um, I did record this, this, uh, introduction earlier and it just disappeared. So I would have had this out on time. Dag and have it, but makes me realize I do need to go downtown and get the equipment that I failed to get today. I just needed to take a day and just stay at home. And it was gorgeous. The energy was gorgeous. We opened up all the windows. We had all the air from outside. Just why? Well, just wishing us this happy energy. It was just happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy energy. It was so amazing. Like just, oh, it was incredible. And it gave me time to enjoy the sounds of the birds, the parrots across the street. And we had a, a rock in the window so it won't slam shut with the wind so the pigeons could come in. <laughs> they don't really come in all the way, but they come like kind of, they stick their heads inside and they, they open their little beaks to say, hey, feed me. They're very sweet. So Fred and Ethel got fed. My son and I fed them both. And, Fred even high-fived me with his wing. <laughs> it was so sweet. <laughs> it was a good day. We had a good day today. I mean, it was energetically lovely. I bought two amazing t-shirts yesterday, and I was really happy about that. One said, uh, believe more in yourself. I showed that to my son today, and I bought one um, for him yesterday. It said, enjoy the journey, and it was, it was cool. It was like, I, I got these amazing t-shirts and I came home and I'm like, wait a minute. Hey, these are all in English. Like, that's hilarious. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I live in a Spanish speaking country and, and it's like, oh, all the shirts are in English. And most of the people here do speak English actually, because everyone's taught English in, in Ecuador. In fact, in, in Cuenca, people are pretty educated. Now, most people are afraid to use English, but you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I met someone yesterday who, who, um, didn't let on he knew English and then all of a sudden he started speaking in English but he was so shy about it I'm like oh that's okay I mean I'm gonna help you I mean you help me with my Spanish right you know I, I love sweet exchanges like that and I met some really nice people yesterday just walking around just it was actually really nice I, I actually talked to about three people and four or five other people said hi to me they're very sweet just it was a really good vibe out yesterday. And I had this intense love in my heart. And when you leave the house and you have an intense love in your energetic field of just, I love everybody and everybody loves me. And you have that attitude. It's like, and nothing's going to bring you down, you know, not even a drunk taxi driver. I had a drunk taxi driver yesterday and he was like out of control. And I realized, wait a minute, I've had this drunk taxi driver before. At the end, when you're about to pay the fare, he gets really angry. It's like a pattern he's got. <laughs> I really should have turned on. There's there's like a, a video, and if there's a button you push, that you can start a video on the back of any taxi here. It's the law. So if there's a dispute, then they get to see your side and their side of it. So, you know, <laughs> if it ever goes to like the law or court, but <laughs> anyway, I, you know, the other day, I think I might have mentioned this three or four days ago that I changed my category from religion and spirituality to pure spirituality, the subcategory of only spirituality. And it took me, I mean, it was like maybe three days a week, I'd be on a chart for religion and spirituality. And since I moved it over to only spirituality category, I have been on five or six charts in, on iTunes every single day. So I wanted to thank all the people who are listening to me in Taiwan and Thailand and France and Nigeria and Australia because you guys have helped me get on the charts. 
Now, some of those positions on the charts are somewhere around, somewhere around 200. But the other day, like a few days ago, I was like number seven on the iTunes chart in France, in Paris. So I wanted to say thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And I know I didn't say that right. My pronunciation of French is not very good. I do want to go there and learn a little bit more. <laughs> My son and I have been talking about going to France to learn more French and for him to go to chef school to learn about French cooking. And then we would go to Italy and learn more about Italian while he goes to chef school to learn about Italian cooking. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to need a swimming pool in both of these countries <laughs> if we do it after we become Ecuadorian citizens, of course. And after he graduates from chef school, the top chef school here in Cuenca is very good. And he'll learn international cuisine, not just Ecuadorian or South American, but I hope to God he learns Peruvian food because if you guys are anywhere at all near a Peruvian restaurant, I suggest you go, but make sure you don't want to go every day because you will gain a lot of weight. <laughs> Anyone who goes to Lima, if you spend a month there, you're going to gain 15 pounds the first month, guaranteed. The food is that incredible. Even just the 2 or $3 meals are so incredible there. I mean, it's just, ugh. Easter egg color sauces, <laughs> like pale green, pale purple, pale pink, pale yellow. And they're all absolutely incredible. Then you come to Ecuador and everything's like mixed with mayonnaise. And it's like, ew, what? <laughs> but in Peru, it's, it's, food is really good there. Anyway, <laughs> and my son already knows how to make ceviche. He's like, I already know how to make ceviche. And he learned Mexican style, Peruvian style. He's learned, I think he's learning Ecuadorian style. Anyway, so it's like pretty cool. I'm, so that's like his resolution is to learn how to be a better cook this year. So I'm like super excited about that. He's in there making um, multiple uh, seafoods campy. It smells, my whole house smells incredible right now. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to everything. I have such a beautiful and loving, joy-filled energy surrounding me since yesterday or maybe the day before. And um, I'm grateful for that. And a lot of that has to do with you guys listening and listening to me on iTunes. And, and I'm topping the charts. I was like number three in Taiwan. I, I didn't even know that people spoke English in Taiwan. But if you're in Taiwan and you're listening to me on iTunes, thank you so much. I'm like absolutely over the moon by this. I topped two different charts in Nigeria. And that makes me happy. I don't think I know anybody in Nigeria. You know, so I'm I'm really grateful that a lot of you that are listening to me, I don't know you. You're not my friends and my family and the ringers that are making me, you know, top the charts. It's, it's actually people who are spiritually opening up and awakening right now. And that's you. So I wanted to thank you for that. I'm really grateful to be on this journey with you. It's incredible. It's been incredible for me. I mean, as I'm helping you, you guys are helping me. And I love the symbiosis, <laughs> symbiotic relationship going on here. It's really neat. So um, I have been listening to you guys to Cosmic Disclosure about the secret space program. Oh, my God. If you have a, an opportunity to go on Gaia.com, I mean, there's like 216 episodes. It's, it's like so much information. But uh, Corey Good is being interviewed by David Wilcock. And David Wilcock used to be on Art Bell all the time on Coast to Coast AM back in the day. And I think I mentioned this a couple times, but I'm like blown away. Some of the information. You guys, according to this, there is a secret space program that's been going on since maybe the 50s. It's like Star Trek on the backside of the moon. There's like a moon base and all the races that go from all the different places in our galaxy and our solar system, as well as other places, it's a neutral zone. And, you know, there's no fighting. There's never going to be. It's a peaceful place. And everybody goes there and does their exchanges. And there's like a hospital there that can treat anybody from any with any kind of anatomy from any world. It's pretty crazy. So I'll tell you guys more about it in the upcoming uh, weeks as I learn more. But we're going to take a quick break. And when I come back, boom, we're getting into resolutions, baby, right after this message. 
how to create and keep realistic resolutions right after. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you. All right, guys, before we make our new year's resolution and it's not too late to start now i know tomorrow is the first day of the second week of the new year (laughs) if you want to count it by numbers you know seven days to a week today will be the end of the first week but before we start on our new year's resolution you have to make sure number one that this is a realistic goal. We want to make realistic resolutions. If it's not realistic, it's not going to come to pass. It's not going to become real. And if it doesn't become real, then we're going to feel like a failure at the end of the year and go, this wasn't a good year. But we don't want that. We want to start fresh. We want to start new. Remember the newness energy. That's what we want. So if you make $30,000 a year right now, and you have no prospects and no idea and you don't know how to do it, you can't make a goal of making a million dollars this year when you don't have a plan and anything that's clear cut. Playing the lottery is not going to cut it. <laughs> so say you have a, say, say you already have an idea for a job or a business and you want to start like maybe a micro business. Like say you have a normal job but you want to start a lawn cutting business or a maid service and you want to build it up. And then by the end of the year, you want to sell it. You want to make a profit. Well, maybe set, set the goal for doubling your income. Maybe by the end of the year, you'll make another $30,000 with your business. You know, make it something realistic. Don't say I'm going to go from $30,000 to like a million dollars, you know? And if you're a millionaire already, Don't set an unrealistic goal or, I mean, a more than realistic goal of I'm going to make an extra 50,000 this year. That makes no sense. If you already make $1 million a year, $50,000 is nothing. Make a a goal of making 2,000 or I mean $2 million, $2,000. I'm just kidding. You know, just so if you make 1 million a year, why don't we double that? Make it 2 million this year. 
if you know how and you've got the means and the ideas and the ways and the team, do it, right? So make a realistic resolution. Can you stop heroin this year? Yes, you can. Can you stop drinking or smoking or vaping this year? Yes, you can. Can you lose a hundred pounds this year? You know what? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's absolutely possible. But if you have more than 50 pounds to lose and that's your goal and you need to lose weight, there's something that we were taught in hypnotherapy school when I went to HMI in Tarzana. And this is what we uh, learned is that if somebody comes into you and they say, I've got a New Year's resolution, I want you to hypnotize me to lose weight. And you say, okay, how much do you need to lose? If they say any number under 50 pounds, then I can help them. If they say any number over 50 pounds, I have to send them to the doctor and get a doctor's note. And now I've got to work with their doctor because most weight issues that are over 50 pounds, that's usually something to do with hormones or thyroid or something else going on in the body. So if you need to lose 60 or 70 or 100 pounds, you're going to have to see a doctor and work with a nutritionist and a doctor. And I suggest going to Dr. Berg, B-E-R-G, YouTube channel, because he will tell you everything you need to know to reverse diabetes, even to reverse arthritis, heart disease, uh, liver disease, all that. You can learn how to reverse all of it. So if your goal is one of health and you have extreme health issues, don't just say, I'm going to just go start. You know, if you need a hundred pounds to lose, don't just start going to the gym. Trust me on that. You need to start from the beginning, go to the doctor, get the readings, get the blood work drawn up, get everything done to see where you're at. Like, why did you have so much weight to lose? Right? If you only need to lose 10 or 15 pounds, by all means, Join a gym. Again, Dr. Berg, is help. it's good for everybody who needs to lose even a pound. Even people who are thin, but they need to gain muscle or they want to get in better uh, physical health. Just health, you know. Um, Dr. Berg will help you with that. Uh, I mean, his nutrition. His in nutritional information I have found to be absolutely impeccable. I mean, don't listen to your neighbors as, just be a vegan. That would be so healthy. No, it might not be for you. <laughs> might be excellent for them, but it might not be for you. One of my uh, friends from my childhood was training for the Olympics and dropped dead, dead of a heart attack because she was a vegetarian. She didn't have enough cholesterol in her system. She needed to eat more meat with how she was pushing her body. Um, you know, it was like ridiculous. You know, um, I know people who have had heart attacks because they were eating the Pritikin diet. <laughs> So the worst diets you can have it includes wheat. You should not eat wheat. Not good for anyone. You know, um, wheat causes inflammation in the body and it causes arthritis and heart disease. So be careful if your if your resolution is diet related and health related. Make sure you know what you're doing before you start doing it. Do your research. Make your realistic resolutions. Okay. So that's number one, the absolute number one. Now, number two is make sure it's something you really, really, really want to do. Don't be shooting all over yourself. Don't say, I should lose weight. I should quit smoking. If you honestly, deep down, secret of secrets, deep inside your heart, you love smoking those cigars. And you don't really give a flying fig what anyone thinks about that. Don't go, I should lose, I should lose weight. I should stop smoking the scars. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop. You're never going to make it, right? You're not going to make it through that resolution. It's never going to get done if you don't really want to stop, you know? So make it something that you really, really, really want to do. If you are addicted to pornography and that's what's preventing you from maybe gaining a girlfriend or a job. <laughs> maybe it's time to seek help outside of yourself and get over that addiction. But if you don't really want to stop, there's nothing that anyone can do for you. 
right? So make sure it's something you really, 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 really want to do. You're very motivated to do it. And that impetus, that fire inside, that inner ignition of the passion, that's what's going to get you to where you want to be. All right. So if somebody else said, you got to do this or you should do that. And maybe that should be your resolution. And you go, yeah, okay. I'll read a book a week for the next year. And you're like somebody who loves sports and the outdoors and you could give a crap less about reading. You know, don't let anyone bully you into your resolution. Don't let anyone tell you what to do or give you ideas that you have absolutely no passion for. If you could barely get through the sentence of it without wanting to just fall asleep <laughs> or crawl under a rock and die. I mean, you know, you, you can, they've got to be resolutions that you love the idea that you just cannot wait. All right. If you're going to go into something, uh, half assed, you're just going to end up looking like an ass in the end of the year. <laughs> you know, seriously, you don't, don't do anything unless you're going to jump in, in a way that's going to be in, all encompassing and, and, and just your passion is going to be sparked and ignited. Like if you say, this is the year I'm going to learn how to play the violin. And the first time you pick it up and you hear that first note and it comes out smooth and mellow and perfect and it vibrates through your whole body. And you just feel like one with the instrument and you just know. This is what you've got to do. This, this becomes your passion for 2020. That's what I'm talking about. That kind of spark, that ignition, that thing that you just, you cannot wait. You think about it when you go to bed at night, you can't wait to do more on your resolution tomorrow. And then you wake up in the morning and you, you go, Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait to grab that violin and take that lesson today can't wait to practice and when you practice at night it and you and you promise yourself you know I'm only gonna do 15 minutes a day and then you uh, turn around and guess what it's already been an hour and a half and you totally lost track of time those are the kind of resolutions I'm talking about all right so number three uh, with any goal no matter what your goal is make sure you break it down into small steps this is how you make your resolution easily attainable. If you are uh, smoking cigarettes 20 a day, don't quit cold turkey because that's going to be the hardest on yourself. You can, if you want to go into the patch and maybe you're going into a program. If you're doing heroin, I kind of suggest you do go into a program. If it's something hardcore, like, you know, you're smoking crack and you can't stop or you're having an issue with with a crystal meth, something like that, that's hardcore. If you're in that situation, get the immediately to a rehab center and don't do that one alone. Okay. But if it's something that, you know, so your goal is to have a successful internet business. Okay. And the first thing you need to know is what kind of business is attractive to you. If it's selling lawn equipment and you hate going outside, that's not going to work out so much. But if you have a passion for photography and drones and you want to have a, a website on drones, you have to learn how to build a website. You need to know uh, what drones and then you need to know uh, where you're going to sell the drones from. Maybe you have a dropship company they'll, you'll work with. Maybe you want to sell them on Amazon or eBay. Maybe you want to sell them through your own website and and or do a split, you know, so you have to like figure out all the different things. So write down all the things you need to do and then start with the first one. And don't go to the second one on the list until you've done the first one and then cross them off. And every time there's a little cross off, a little check, oh, you're going to feel so much better. If you're if you have 20 cigarettes that you smoke every day, well, tomorrow do 19 and stay at 19 for two or three days. And then go to 18 cigarettes for two or three days and then 17. By the end, you're going to be like down to one cigarette and then you do that for three days and then that's it. Baby, you're done. You know, 
supplement with the patch if you have to and then or the nicotine gum and then keep going that way. Now I'm going to tell you if your goal is to quit smoking cigarettes. One of the best things you can do is switch to a brand of cigarette that tastes like crap because you're going to want to smoke. You're going to want to stop smoking. You're not going to want to smoke. And you're going to want to have anise tea, like, you know, the black licorice flavor, anise tea. Drink that every day because it will, with the minerals in it, will help stop the craving. Eat black licorice, just like literally the anise flavored licorice I know doesn't taste very good. But that will literally cut the cravings. Eat a, um, if you're on a diet and you're craving sugar, uh, eat a dill pickle. That would be the number one thing I can tell you. I don't know why, but something in the vinegar, the pickle itself, you eat a dill pickle and it literally cuts your cravings for sugar. I went on a candida diet for six months. I thought I was going to freaking die the, la- the first two months. I, I just, it's like I wanted to kill every stranger I met. I was just like out of control emotionally because as the yeast, if, as you have the yeast die off, you know, when you have candida, I, this is years and years ago, like gosh, 17, no, about 16 years ago. And I just thought for sure I was going to die. And I, I was, I called my doctor and, and he said, oh, I should have told your husband to move the kids and himself to Hawaii away from you for six months because... Yeah, by the way, the yeast dive. I'm like screaming out on the phone. You didn't tell me I was going to feel like this. Oh, my God. What do I do? And he's like, okay, look, you need to calm down. <laughs> Apologize to your husband for being out of control. You know, and he's like, I know this isn't you. It's not your personality. You're a very sweet person. You came into my office. So uh, just start eating dill pickles like several times a day. Just the dill pickle, the dill pickle, the dill pickle. I swear to God, it's going to help you. And you know what? I did within like two or three days. I was 100% better. I was like, okay, I feel so much better. And I was able to continue with the goal of, you know, eating sugar-free and the the herbs and doing all the food. I Literally, I had like four or five foods I can eat and no more for like six months. Do you know how absolutely insane that was? But I did it. I saved my own life. I almost died. I had a bunch of things going on and that helped me. So... You know, there's some things that you can do, you know, to fix it for yourself. And with any goal, just break it down into small steps. Make it easily attainable. Say you're a real estate agent and your goal is to sell 25 houses and you've never sold a single house. You just started. Break it down, you know, but figure out all the ways that other people who are super successful look into it. Do a little bit of research. See how other people, the number one People in the in the Seattle market might be doing something different than the people that are number one in the in the Las Vegas market or the New York market. So, you know, if that's your goal, you know, everyone has a different thing, and I love that. Everyone, we're all unique individuals. We all have a totally different goal. Maybe your goal is to find the love. So break it down into easy steps. Are you? Um, would you date yourself? Look at yourself in a mirror and like, well, you know what? I think I need a few pounds. I gotta lose. So, all right, maybe I could hit the gym and find hot men there or hot women there. Maybe that's the thing. (laughs) Or maybe you look great weight-wise, but your skin is breaking out. Maybe you need to start, um, you know, cleansing your face with a different cleanser. Maybe you need to look at, make sure there's no methylparabens or parabens in the stuff you're using. Maybe it's your, um, it could be your laundry soap. Maybe you want to make your own laundry soap so that the pH won't be off. I found out that out the other day that like clothes soap that we buy this commercial is 11 or 12 pH. It's extremely alkaline and that could be very irritating to the skin. But if you take baking soda and you, and there's a way you could specially do it, you break down with a um, cheese grater, Castile soap, pure Castile, wear gloves, but because it's very strong, but break that down and, and with a cheese grater and then get yourself some baking soda and you bake that in the oven for like, an hour on very low, but you got to look the recipe up. There's a lady um, from Ireland who does this and I I could send it to you if you're really interested in this, but you mix it up then you could put in your laundry before you wash it, 10 drops to 12 drops of essential oil of lemon or of um, sweet orange or even lavender and make your your laundry smell good. And that also kills germs because you know, even eucalyptus, if you're in a, if you're sick, eucalyptus will definitely kill germs and clear your sinuses. 
and your and your clothes will smell fresh. And I found out that you know that can make people break out with acne. That could be really bad for you. So if you do the natural laundry soup, that soap, not soup, soap. If you do natural laundry soap, that will actually help. Maybe you know, and also you'll feel like, hey, I did something and I accomplished something. There it is. So you know, if your goal is find love, you know, look at your body, look at what's going on. You know, why people aren't attracted to you. Maybe it's your attitude, and you need to start uh, fixing、um, some of your emotional stuff and your psychological stuff. Maybe you need to switch up your cologne. Maybe you smell like pee. <laughs> you know, I mean, it might just be the pH of your skin matching doesn't match your own perfume or whatever. You know. It, it could be something really strange like that, or it might just be your own attitude towards yourself, or maybe you're looking in all the wrong places. Don't if you find someone in a bar, you're going to leave them in a bar. Chances are. <laughs> Some of the best advice I ever heard when I was a kid is if you grow up, honey, and you meet them in a bar, you're going to leave them in a bar. Don't date alcoholics. <laughs> They're going to only disappoint you. You know, so start going to higher quality places. Go to meetup groups.、Um, You know, photography groups or Sierra,、um, was it? What's that? The Sierra Club.、Uh, they have hikes. If you love going outside nature, go to, do a Sierra Club hike. You're going to meet other people who love to do Sierra Club hikes, and you might have something more in common. You might have an attraction, but it's nice to go do something together. You know, get on,、um, you know, a musical board or an art committee, or you know, go to the museum, join the museum. Be a patron of the arts that you love, things that you love. Go to the symphony. Dress in fabulous suits or gorgeous designer gowns, even if you have to borrow it. You know, just something. Make yourself feel good. Go to the opera. Go, go sailing. Learn how to sail. Join a sailing club. You know, whatever it is that's going to make you feel really good. Because you're, if you are looking for love, it's better for you to feel good inside yourself alone first. So, if that's your goal for the year, it, you got your work cut out for you in a lot of ways. But you also have to make sure you're open for love. You're open. You know, if someone says something, you go, "Oh, yeah, okay, I want a relationship." Because you don't want a relationship with them. You can say, "I'm looking for a specific kind of person. I don't think you fit the bill." You know, I don't think I'm right for you, but I think that you're right for somebody else. It's just that you're not what I'm looking for right now. You know, if someone says I'll love you no matter what, and they're not interested in your career, you're a writer. You need someone who wants to read your stuff. That's not the right guy for you. You know, you know, the right woman for you isn't isn't going to be the one who sits around on her ass and does absolutely nothing and expects you to provide 100% of everything. My brother just went through that. He had、um, a relationship with somebody who he really cared about, and then all of a sudden she got extremely depressed, and she wasn't willing to help herself. And he kept trying and trying and trying and trying for almost a year. And he just finally said, "You know what? I love you, but you've got to leave until you can change yourself, because I can't do it all myself." You know, he's like, "I can't pay, you know, for the mortgage and the bills and and do all the work, and I come home and." I have to do all the work at home, and I got to take care of your kids, and I've got to do the. You know, I, I he cooks all day at work. He he, you know, cooks in one of the top restaurants in in、um, Denver. My my brother's a chef, and he's like, I can't I can't just do everything. I'd rather just come home to nobody than to somebody that I have to do a whole other job for. You know, it's ridiculous. So, you know, make sure that your goals are easily attainable and. And that you are 100% ready for whatever it is. Are you ready to be a former smoker? Are you ready to have money? Are you ready for that relationship? Do you have room in your heart and in your life and in your mind for that change to have taken place? Can you see the end goal in sight? Break it down into small steps. But one of the first steps is to see yourself at the end of the finish line. Get that strong, pure image in your mind. All right, number four: reward yourself with small, happy rewards. Take a trip, maybe to a, a, an amusement park. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe you want to hop out of an airplane. This is a leap year, <laughs> after all. Maybe maybe you want to go bungee jumping. That's another leap you can take. 
Maybe you want to bungee jump out of a hot air balloon. That's always been something I've wanted to do. I know it's insane. I won't do it now because I don't want anything strapped around my ankles. Uh, now that I broke my ankle. <laughs> that dream is dead. <laughs> but, you know, what? maybe there's something you really want to do. Maybe you want to go to, you know, if you're in L.A., just Canso Gardens or Huntington Library Gardens. My God, it's one of the most beautiful gardens. I saw them when I was a kid, and I've just, I've been, like, thinking about them ever since. I really, really want to go back. You know, so reward yourself with small, happy rewards. Going to the Natural History Museum, if that's your thing. Or an art gallery, you know, something... They'll make you happy. Go have a spa day with a friend. Go out with it with a, a loved one to movie night. Maybe you have a nephew or a niece. Maybe you're, you're single and you don't have a family, but you have a nephew or a niece who's been dying to go to the movies and her parents or his parents are too busy doing their lives. And, and you say, you know what? I'm going to take, you know, my niece out to a movie. Why not? You know, we're going to go out to dinner, we're going to have a movie, we're going to have a lot of fun, and we'll come back. And you give the, the mom and dad a date night and a break. It's wonderful. Museum. Change your mindset. Go to a museum that has a topic that you've never known anything about, but you're interested in, like the Gold Museum <laughs> or the Gold Miners Museum or a Native American Art Museum. You know, find something. Even in Hollywood, there's a weird museum. <laughs> it's one of my favorite museums. It is really weird. I mean, they've got a shrunken head from Peru. <laughs> they got some really weird. They have a skeleton of what they're calling Rosemary's baby. <laughs> Instead, it's like a half demon, half I don't even know what. Crazy stuff in the Weird Museum. I took some kids there once, some teenagers that I, I was a counselor for. I think I need. I think they needed some more counseling at the end of the Weird Museum. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know it was gonna be as weird as it was. <laughs> but go to a Hollywood Wax Museum. Go to something strange. If you're into strange stuff, I love strange stuff. Reward yourself if you live in, say, Arkansas. You can go over to the the um, mines and you can mine up like what opals and amethysts and and crystals and I think Herkimer diamonds you know whatever you pay like I don't know hundred dollars or something to get in and you can mine from six in the morning till six in the evening and anything you keep I mean anything you capture you get to keep some people walk out of there with thousands of dollars worth of stuff and it's all, not only in Arkansas, it's all over the world. There's mines like this. It's really interesting. So find something like that that's going to be really amazing. But you don't have to reward yourself with big things like that. That could be like, say you have 10 steps and every every third step you reward yourself with a really big goal. And, and reward yourself with small, happy rewards like taking yourself out to a really nice lunch on the other side of town or buy yourself a new suit or I don't know what you people do, but whatever it is, you know, if you're an introvert, buy a new book for yourself. You know how that is. Oh my God. There's nothing to me like it. The fresh pages, just smelling the fresh paper in a brand new book in the smooth cover. And it's just like kind of cool to the touch. And it's just like, Oh, it's one of my favorite breaking in the spine of a new book so that it won't break all the way. Like, there's just something about that. It just, oh, a new book. I love new books. I haven't had a new book in a long time. <laughs> but new jacket, new perfume, cologne, piece of jewelry. Maybe there's a little ring you had your eye on. Maybe a little silver ring. It's only $5, but it's something you liked. You know, um, get yourself a new crystal. Maybe that's a thing, a crystal pendulum. You know, go to an antique store and buy a little ring. My son bought me a ring last year for 5 bucks. And it's a ring that's probably at least worth 25, 30 bucks, but it's a little tiny ring. But what if that was one of the things that you rewarded yourself with? And then every time you look down at your hand or your wrist and you have that piece of jewelry and you looked at that and that reminded you that you got one third of the way through your resolution, it's going to keep you going. Now, what if you took yourself to a museum or a movie and that was one of your rewards? Put that up on your, on your vision board or your bulletin board or, or tape it to your laptop. Whenever you're going to um, be working on your resolution and then you look up and there's a reminder that you already got through part of it. That was your reward for the first part. 
what's your reward for the second part? Is it going to the zoo? <laughs> is it going out of town? You know, what is it? Is it taking a train ride somewhere? Or a day trip to the beach? You know, put put it all together. You know, maybe you want to take a ski trip. Or you want to take a sleigh ride. Because you're in the snow now. So, whatever it is, reward yourself with small, happy rewards. Number five. Have a reminder about what you're doing. Whether you have a gratitude rock. Remember the gratitude rocks from The Secret? Keep a gratitude rock. You're trying to put your hand in your pocket. There it is. You know, be grateful. Be grateful that you are here. You're alive. You have the newness energy and it's coming your way and your resolution is about ready to come to fruition. Have a piece of art that's going to keep you on track. Something that's a little bit of a um, reminder. I just bought a t-shirt yesterday. It says, believe more in yourself. And I bought another t-shirt yesterday for myself. It says, think outside the box. You know, so I have these reminders, you know, and I bought these for pajamas and one of the, I mean, they could, I, you know, one of the shirts actually is nice enough to wear outside, you know, just for day to day. It, it wasn't a pajama top, but I bought it for that. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, I like this. It's, it's a good positive message, you know? So what if I had a piece of art that says something that make me help me remember my goal, right? Put a string on your wrist. If you uh, have a bad habit, put a rubber band on your wrist and every time you feel like smoking, Every time you feel like eating a piece of candy and you're trying to get away from your sugar, snap your wrist, baby. Snap it till it hurts, but not so much until it bleeds. I mean, don't hurt yourself, but like hurt yourself a little bit, but you know, then you're going to stop. And then every time you think, and then you take a drink of water, like put slices of, of lime or lemon or, or put, um, coconut and not coconut, a cucumber in your water. You know, something that's going to be wonderful and, and flavorful and put berries in your water. You know, especially if you're trying to um, trying to stop a bad, health, unhealthy habit like smoking, especially. You want to do something that's going to reward you, like crush up mint in your water. So, all right, we're going to take a quick break and go to the next section. guys so further reminders of your new year's resolution reminders to do your new year's resolution um besides rubber band idea what about having an affirmation card where you write down your affirmations i am so happy and grateful now that i have lost weight and i fit into my clothes and i look great or i am so happy and grateful that i always have great breath and i am a former smoker um i am so happy and grateful that I have gotten into the career of my dreams and I'm living my best life ever. You know, so whatever your affirmation, you can just write it on a little, um, a little note card, or you could turn it into art and put it in a frame. Why not? You have a whole year or almost a whole year to get through your goal. So whatever your resolution is, make sure you have a gentle and sweet reminder, something that's going to make you so happy and uplifted energetically every time you look at it. Number six, change your habits that are surrounding the habit that you wish to change. So I, I, uh, you know, I, I'm a hypnotherapist and one of the things that we were taught is if someone's a smoker, you've got to find out all their deep, dark, dirty secrets about smoking. Like, when do they have a cigarette? Is it every time their mother calls because they need that emotional, like, crutch? Is it every time they finish sex and they smoke right after? Um, you got to find out every detail because you got to start breaking the habit one thing at a time. So if this is you and you smoke when you drink, maybe you stop drinking or maybe you start drinking only in a place in which they're not smoking, you know, maybe when smoking isn't allowed. So instead of, you know, drinking out on the patio where you can smoke, you only drink inside or maybe you just don't go to that bar anymore. 
and maybe have whiskey at home. If that's not your issue and you don't want to resolve that, we could do that one on another day. <laughs> but what if you're, you know, so what if you, you smoke after sex? Well, instead change to gum or cane and like a little piece of, you know, sugar-free candy or something, you know, um, what if you uh, switch to grabbing a couple mint leaves? That's super healthy, actually. It's time to get up and have a little salad, honey. Let's go. <laughs> you know, um, just switch it up. You got to switch up the little habits, right? So if you change your habits that surround your habits, like what if you want to stop drinking and your thing is where you, you, dr you drink every night when you come home from work and you drink to sad piano music or jazz, why don't you come home and instead have a nice glass of water with slices of orange in it or slices of cucumber, you know, have some kind of lovely fruit water, okay? And you switch it up by drinking that to rhythm and blues or punk rock. <laughs> you know, just switch up the habit a little bit, just a little bit of a switch, and that will help you fix some of the things so you don't associate you know if you have one habit you want to change and you've associated this with 10 other habits change the other habits are super easy it's always easy to stop listening to pop music and instead listen to classical right it's always easy to change the kind of music you listen to you know, say you have a, a special jacket you wear every Saturday night and it smells like smoke and you're a smoker. You know what? Give it to give it to charity or take it to the cleaners and clean it up. Wear a different jacket, you know, and you're not gonna smell the smoke, you're not gonna be reminded of, oh yeah, that's what I normally do, this jacket. You know, if like the pocket is worn out where the cigarettes and the lighter have gone in and out of that pocket a million times, maybe it's time to not have a jacket anymore. <laughs> You know, I know you know what I mean. If you're a smoker, you know you're you know what's going on there. All right, so just change your habits surrounding the habit that you wish to change. All right, so all right, number seven, have a plan to be nice to yourself. Have a plan to be nice to you. Now, if you feel that failure is temporary, you're also going to feel that success is inevitable. And if you remind yourself when you fail or when you start to fail that all failures lead to success eventually because the only true failure in this world is when you fail to keep going in the face of failure. You're never going to be successful if you give up. But if you keep on going and you keep on going and you keep on going even in the face of failure, chances are, honey, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Whatever your goal is. So temporary setbacks, they happen. You know, shift happens. <laughs> All failures lead to success eventually. Failures are nothing but stepping stones on the path to success. You know you can start again. It's not over. Your resolution is not over until old father time of 2020 stops singing and keels over. Ha! <laughs> It's not over till old father time kicks the bucket <laughs> and new baby new year comes in, right? So if your goal is to get it done this year and that's your resolution, <laughs> you're going to get it done. Just keep trying. You know, say you've been going for a week, week and a half without the cigarettes. You're doing really well, doing really good. All right. Oh, hell, your mother-in-law shows up for the weekend unannounced. Oh, my God. And you reach for the cigarette, and before you know it, you smoked it, and you totally forgot you're not a smoker anymore. <laughs> Don't set yourself up for failure. Take the cigarettes out of the house. <laughs> Don't have an emergency supply. 
don't have a cigarette underneath glass that says in case of emergency break glass. <laughs> you know, if that's your thing. I mean, most people, literally most resolutions are this. Uh, get money, find love, stop a habit you don't like, lose weight, get in shape, or learn something new. Maybe some for some people to read more books, which is kind of along the lines of learning something new. I mean, along with, you know, learning how to fly a plane or skydive or, you know, ski, play, play an instrument, learn a new dance, you know, like the tango. Oh, my God. If you're newly single, go learn to tango. One of the sexiest dances ever. And it takes two years to learn. So, you know, you maybe have the goal of learning the first 20 steps, right? <laughs> It's one of my goals someday to just go to Argentina and just learn to tango, baby. Ugh. Love Argentina. I hope my one true love finds me soon so we can go tango in Argentina. <laughs> It's not my resolution, but it is one of my life goals. It's on my bucket list. Before I kick the bucket, that's, that's getting done. That's getting crossed off the list is tangoing in Argentina. <laughs> Now, number eight, if it will help you and not at all hinder you, have an accountability coach. I mean, an, an accountability partner, sorry. Not, or, you can, or, you know, you could get a life coach or an accountability coach if you really want. I could do that for you. If you guys need an accountability coach, we could do just maybe one or two calls um, over uh, Facebook or even Skype, even even over WhatsApp would be fine. You know, if you guys want an accountability coach, I am available for $111 per month. We'll do two calls a month. We'll say the first and the 15th or the 15th and the 30th, okay? And, you know, for well, for February the 29th because it's a leap year and the 15th. If you guys really want an accountability coach, I can do that. My son is an excellent accountability accountability coach as well. He used to do accountability every single day. He'd have people call every day. Then he had clients that called every Monday to set the tone for the week. And he was really little. He was like, I don't know, nine years old. And he was excellent. Excellent. And he learned, he had a, a quick little conversation with Laurel Langmire, the famous, really famous Laurel Langmire. Um, she's the author of The Millionaire um, Maker. And she's and she also wrote a book called Yes. And she gave him a copy of that book, Yes. And he got all fired up. And I sold, I had two cars. I sold one of my cars to go to her seminar. It was $700 and she allowed my kids to go free because she absolutely adored my kids. And she knows what it's like to be a single mom. So she's like, oh, she's like, I love you, of course. And she gave us all hugs. She's one of the sweetest people in the whole wide world. I love her with all my heart. But I went to her, I went to her seminar. Um, it was like a three-day weekend and And my youngest came out of there as an accountability coach. <laughs> he did an excellent job. So if you want a 17-year-old accountability coach, he, he could use the he could use the excess money. <laughs> but he's really good. I mean, he's willing to do it like several times a week, even if you want that. But but if it's not going to hinder you, so if you make your mother your accountability partner and your mother is always too critical, probably it's not going to work out. You need someone who's positive and happy and understands the hardships of really changing, truly making real changes in your life. It can be very challenging. It can be emotionally challenging as well. In some cases, it might bring up psychological issues you have to deal with. So having the right person as an accountability partner It's going to make all the difference. If you have someone who's not very good, then, you know, you just don't really want that. But it's not going to hinder you. Try it out. You know, maybe you've got a friend who wants to walk more. And that's your goal is to walk more. Just go to the park. And you guys are neighbors anyway. Well, bada boom, bada bing. Why not? Maybe one of you is going to get a dog. Maybe both of you could go get a dog. And now the dog's going to be your accountability partner for walking more. It's really, really true. What if you're, you know, you you wanted the goal of having more love in your life, but not necessarily a relationship? Then buy a cat. You know, 
because you're going to learn about the ebb and flow and the give and take of love. You're going to love the cat even when the cat's not even looking at you and is in the other room asleep in the windowsill. You know, that that's actually, having a cat is, a, it, it like teaches you a lot of good lessons. If you're not allergic, especially. Having a kitty cat, they're excellent uh, teachers of, of love, but also of setting up emotional boundaries in space. So dogs don't really know anything about boundaries in space, they, but they will teach you everything that you need to know about actual true love, pure, unhindered, complete love, like not obviously romantic or sexual love, but if you don't have enough love, like just love in your life, you don't have someone excited that you're home and just willing to jump into your arms and lick your face. If you don't have that, you know, buying a dog, that would help. And dogs are great accountability partners as far as walking more. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't have to have a human accountability partner if you don't want. <laughs> but it's good if you do. <laughs> um, they also have to have a good resolution so that you can both work on each other's resolution. You don't have to have the same one. It helps if you do, but it, it could be totally different. But you could have a little, what were your ups and downs for the week? Just have a little chit chat every week, a 10 minute call. What, what did you, uh, what did you accomplish this week? What did you want to accomplish? What did you fail at? All right. Well, that's okay. Guess what? You have another week to try again. But if, if you have to tell someone a report every week on your progress, oh my good golly, are you going to make progress? Because you don't want to be embarrassed. And you're only going to be embarrassed once before you realize, oh, crap, <laughs> this is accountability. <laughs> so I have to actually be accountable for my actions. And that's when you're going to learn to take the best actions possible to meet your resolution head on. So you can have, you know, anyone can be an accountability partner. Just to be honest, you can have a mom sister, brother, father, neighbor, friend, uncle, uh, even your own child. Well, I told you, my, my kid was an excellent accountability coach. And there's been times in my life when he, he approached me and said, look, I know you're trying to get this goal and, and you're not getting it done. And I think you need an accountability partner. In fact, I'm going to be your life coach for the next six months. We'll get together every week. And he's done that for me. And he's like, I'm not going to charge you because you're my mom. And I want you to see, I want to see you succeed. Because if I see you succeed, you're gonna you're gonna impress that upon me, and then I'm gonna grow up to be successful. So I want to be the person that helps you meet those goals. Because I want to be the one that helps you. Because I love you. So my youngest, he's really intense. He's been intense since he was able to walk. He was actually intense as a baby. He was born in October, and his very first Christmas. On Christmas Eve, we caught him alone in his crib. He woke up in the middle of the night singing with perfect pitch, silent night, at least not really singing the words, obviously, because he's only like, you know, six weeks old. Or actually, he wasn't. He was, he, was, he was like five weeks old. And he was singing like, ah, you know, just with tones. Perfect pitch, silent night. We were really blown away. We were like, I don't think we sang that to him. I don't think we played that song around him at all, but he knew that song. He knew who he was when he came here. <laughs> He's been a very strong personality since he was born. I mean, some a lot of the kids are now, though. It's not just my kids. It's, it's everyone's kids. Anyone who is listening to this, if you have a kid under the age of 20, chances are they, they've had a pretty strong personality and pretty strong opinions. You might have been butting heads with them. They're probably telling you everything you say or do is wrong. It's like, oh, my Lord. The new generation, they, they don't take crap off anyone. They're, they're strong, powerful people, and they're going to be a force of nature to be reckoned with. And in the next few years, they're going to change and help our world. So I'm very grateful, very grateful to my kids. They've helped me see a whole lot more about this world than I saw before. But anyway, getting back to this. So find yourself an accountability partner. And I bet there's apps out there. You might have a, an accountability app. 
you might have an AI bot that will write you. And I'm sure simpleology.com is an excellent website to go to um, for accountability and also goal setting and training. And if you have something where you want to time it, the Pomodoro timers, look online for a Pomodoro timer. You know, those tomatoes that your grandma or your auntie probably had in the kitchen. Maybe your mom had one that looks like an apple or looks like a, a, a tomato. Pomodoro is... Uh, kind of tomato that you'd find in in Italy, so it's named after that. But um, the Pomodoro timer, I think it might be called Pomodoro.com, <laughs> and you just like set it for however long, and then it will ding, and then you're done with whatever your goal was. So if it's like meditating for 20 minutes, a lot of people have meditation as their goal. They want to get more spiritual, you know, meditating. It's an easy goal. Mindfulness, you know, set the timer, and for 20 minutes, just be mindful. You know, listen to every breath and every thought and everything and walk, take a walk and be aware of every blade of grass that you see and, and every voice that you hear and, you know, be mindful of every sound. I mean, being mindful is like extremely relaxing, it takes off all your stress because you have to think about every single thing that is happening right there before you. All right. So. Keep each other on track when you are an accountability partner. You got to make sure you're helping them as much as they're helping you. And that's all you do. You just keep each other on track. What were your goals for the week? What do you plan to do next week? What do you plan to do? All right, what are you going to tell me next week when we talk? What do you think you will have gotten done? What do you need help with? Who do you need to call to get that help? Ask each other the real questions. And, and be very specific because the more specific, the better. And the next week there's a follow up and keep a notebook, keep an accountability notebook. If you have a part, part, partner that you know, you're helping each other, write down your goals, you know, on one side of the paper and write down their goals on the other side of the paper. What are their goals that they said they're going to do? Keep them accountable, but keep yourself accountable too. And then you keep each other accountable and you both are going to succeed together and have if you have accountability partner, make certain, make damn certain that you have a plan at the end because you've got to go out and celebrate, honey. You've got to go. Got to go out, go dancing, go out to dinner, just, you know, go to, a, you know, the carnival or a festival or have some kind of an amazing goal. You're going to go to Las Vegas and see a show. You're going to fly to New York and go to go to Broadway and see a show. Maybe your, your, your goal is to fly to Paris and see the City of Lights. Maybe. Maybe it's going to the Ice Hotel. I don't know what you people want to do. I, those are my goals. I want to go to Paris. I want to go to, the, I want to, go to the, one of those ice hotels that they make over in Iceland <laughs> or Finland. And I want to see the Northern Lights and take a, a sleigh ride out to the ice hotel and sleep on an ice bed and drink out of drink vodka out of ice carved glasses. It sounds so strange, but it's always been one of my weird goals. That's another bucket list. So none of those are my resolutions, but, <laughs> but that's, those are things I want to do. But anyway, okay. Let's keep each other on track. And number nine, gratitude journal. Appreciate what you already have. Keep your gratitude journal. Okay. And this is actually the positivity step. Number nine is actually, it's positivity step. The positivity. Keep your positivity up. And this is how you're going to do it. Number one, um, it's like a subcategory of number nine. Nine A, gratitude journal. Appreciate what you have by writing down what you're grateful for every day. Write down five things, only five things. Right before you go to bed, write down five things, put your gratitude journal away, and then just as you close your eyes, feel the gratitude of those things. I'm grateful to have my accountability partner. I'm grateful that I had aspirins, I had a headache today. I'm grateful that I survived through another harsh winter day. You know, whatever it is you're grateful for. I'm grateful that my cat is cuddling with me right now under the blanket because I was cold and, and her paws are, are cute. I get to hold her little paws. 
whatever it is, you know, and feel the gratefulness, feel it flow through your body. Feel it change your aura when you feel gratitude. That's one step gained closer to the peace of God inside of you. That's how you inherit it, inherit the kingdom. Now, again, and then now 9B is write down a list of accomplishments you've done in your life. If you're not educated, don't don't uh, start beating yourself up. If you dropped out of high school and you don't have any education after that, um, a lot of people think, well, I don't have any accomplishments. I didn't graduate high school. Yeah, you do. You learned how to walk. You learned how to use a toilet. Those are huge accomplishments. You were a baby that couldn't walk, and now you're walking and you're talking. You're formulating thoughts on your own. <laughs> Everybody has had a huge list of accomplishments, but they don't give themselves credit. If you've learned how to read, there's a lot of people out in the world that don't know how to read. If you have a job, you're able to keep a job. A lot of people in the world don't. They don't have a job, and they haven't been able to get a job. You make it past that first interview, and you get a job. That's a huge accomplishment. You write your first resume. Oh my God. I got my degree. I got my, my bachelor's degree in psychology and I'd never made a resume in my life. And I was like, Oh my God, how am I going to get a job? I don't even know how to do this. I spent two weeks at Barnes and Noble trying to figure out how to do it. I couldn't even afford to buy a book on it. I had literally had to just sit at the tables there and, and I bought a notebook and I like researched and wrote down everything. <laughs> I read like 20 books for free just learning how to make a resume because I was like oh my god and then at the end of that I became a resume expert and I started my own business on the side as a side hustle teaching people how to interview for a job how to write a resume and I also had a resume service where I'd help clean up people's resumes you know it's like you never know it's going to come out of uh, you know the necessity that is the mother of invention <laughs> but write a list of your accomplishments you know, did you go to high school? Did you graduate grade school? Did you learn how to tie your shoe? Did you win any awards? You know, whatever it is, even if it's so, so small and insignificant, it might not really be because if you have a list of 20 accomplishments you've done or a hundred or even 10, all the days you feel low, you pull out the list of accomplishments and you read them out loud. So look, I've done all that. I could do more. And then you get out your gratitude journal and you write down five things. I'm grateful. I accomplished that. <laughs> okay. So in this list of accomplishments, not just of like maybe awards you won or degrees you've earned or whatever, you can also remind yourself of your past strengths. Did you overcome a narcissistic abusive relationship? Were you able to get your own apartment and pay for your own rent? That's hard. When you're 18 and you're so scared and you've never lived on your own before, that's one of the scariest things in the world. That's an accomplishment almost everyone has already accomplished, right? So make sure that you have a list of your victories and your past strengths. The times you stood up for yourself even, that is an accomplishment. I learned this, by the way, from the, the accomplishment thing. I learned this from Bill Bartman, who is a billionaire you've never heard of. Look him up. He's amazing. He's one of the sweetest people in the world I've ever met. He and I used to be friends. We're not now because we just lost touch. But if I saw him tomorrow, we'd be friends again. I knew his whole family. They're very sweet people. Live in Oklahoma. He lives in a 12,000 square foot mansion. And he grew up dirt poor. I think he said New Jersey. So, I mean, anything is possible. Okay. And you know how he did it? By being nice to people. Number 10. This is the final one for today. Be prepared to be honest and intimate with yourself and with other people. Be humble. Be filled with integrity. Have better integrity with yourself. Okay. Now, if you need help, don't be too proud to ask for it. All right. Have integrity in yourself. Have integrity about when to ask for help and ask for it and be humble. You know, if you're not doing it on your own and you haven't quit smoking and you're just, you're, you're, you're beating yourself up over it, have the integrity to say, you know what? I need help outside myself. Pray to God. Talk to your family members. Talk to your priest. If you're Catholic, go to a hypnotherapist. Whatever it takes, admit it when you need help and then go and ask for help. 
If you can't build the website for the business you're trying to build, learn how to do it. Ask for help. Pay someone to build the website for you. That's still a part of accomplishing your goals. You don't have to do 100% of everything yourself, especially when you're building a business. You know, it, it takes a village, not just one person. Not just the village idiot, right? <laughs> you can't have a village with just the village idiot. That just makes you an idiot. <laughs> you need the whole village to make a whole village. <laughs> you can still be the idiot if you want, but you know, hey, <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> so just be prepared to be extremely honest with yourself. Ask yourself the hard questions. Why did I start this habit I want to break? How did it start? And really be prepared to go in deep to your shadow side, like we talked about yesterday, and push that on out. You know, if you start smoking because someone died, it's time to resolve your issues over their death, and you're probably going to automatically want to quit smoking then, if that was your goal, right? If you put on a bunch of weight because you had um, been a victim of sexual abuse, for example, um, and that's your layer of protection between you and the rest of the world, and no man will be interested in you if you're fat, is what you might think in your mind. I met a woman who really went through that. And then she would like go to therapy for a while and get some of her head straight and get really skinny. And she was off and running to Europe and she was a gorgeous model. Very sexy. Just so, so beautiful. And then she'd come back home and then she would be reminded again of what happened. And then she like plump up again. And she told that to me. I'm like, let's work on that. You know, I'll be your accountability partner for that. Because you should be beautiful always. You could always say no. And and we talked about assertiveness. I, I think I helped her. I hope I did. You know, I never, I didn't see her only after two or three weeks we were friends and then she went back to Europe or something. And But, you know, but if whatever it is, you know, be humble and honest with yourself, guys. Anyway, I'm going to be back tomorrow with all unique and original programming. And, well, that's all I got to say about that. I want to thank you for listening, and I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. Until next time, guys, peace. Do you ever wish you could look into the next chapter in your book of life and see what's coming next. What does the universe have in store for you? I can help you with that. I will give you a Celtic cross reading, which is 10 cards, or you can ask me three questions and I use three cards per question. So that's nine cards or I can channel your higher guidance or maybe God directly for you. Maybe you want to talk to your dear departed Aunt Edna because maybe you have a few questions and she was the smartest person you knew. If your deceased relatives are available or your ascended masters, I can channel them for you personally. Let me have one hour to show you the future in your next chapter of your book of life. Readings are $75 and it takes me an hour to an hour and a half to complete. And for this price, you will also be hooked up to the healing grid around the planet for free, which means yours truly, me, I will be giving you Reiki 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life. All you have to do is let me know, metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com, and we will explore your future together.